good morning friends. We're here at Laurel Hill State Park and uh, we've got the dogs are with us. We're planning on hiking the Hemlock Trail, which is something I've been excited to do for quite some time. The Hemlocks, as we talked about in a previous episode, are all getting killed because of the woolly adelgids. So any of these places of virgin hemlock timber, you gotta go see now because 10 years from now, they ain't gonna be here. So that's kind of one of the things that we really wanna try to do these next few years. Here, there's virgin timber up in Potter County, which I've been to, but Rachel's been there too. It's huge trees, but I wanna go film it for you guys. And then uh, Cooper's Rock, where we were earlier, I didn't realize they had virgin timber, but we gotta go see that too and then any other places we can find. Let me know down in the comments if you know of virgin hemlock timber in Pennsylvania or surrounding states for us to go check out. And we'll go there and we'll film it for you. Alrighty, so uh, friends, this trail, at least for the beginning of it, follows Laurel Hill Creek, which this area is a delayed harvest and fly fishing and artificial lures only area, which <laughs> I tried fishing here once and it was the wrong time of year, just wasn't an overly good experience uh, when I did it. But it's been on my list to get back here and to fish it at the right time of the year. As it sits, you know, we haven't even really had the time to do the things that we came here to do, let alone trying to add anything else to the plate. But um, this should be, this should be a fairly scenic trail for the most part because it's along the creek. I don't even know how long it is. We gotta look at the map and kind of see what we're getting ourselves up to here. This shelter, although restored, was originally built by the CCC in the 30s. Laurel Hill is a very old state park, one of the older ones in the state of Pennsylvania. So pretty much everything here dates back to the 30s in the CCC. And the way they pay homage to the CCC though, uh, and it's written everywhere, it really reminds me of Letchworth, which as you know, is one of our favorite places that we've been to date. This trail, you don't even have to go very far to start getting into some hemlock trees. I'll turn the camera around and show you some. We're not to what they call the hemlock natural area quite yet, but it's already full of hemlocks. And so we'll see if we can get some good footage of some of these big trees here. That, Sarah? Salamander. So friends, here's your hemlock tree right here. And you know, I, I haven't seen any evidence of the adelgid in this area. They may be treating some of these trees, but if you look around up in the sky, there's a lot of deciduous trees as well. A lot of really massive red oaks and so that's you know it's a good thing in that if the hemlocks all you know go away disappear or whatever this is still gonna be a pretty cool forest to walk through just because of the size of the oaks and cherries I've seen some really big cherries 
so it's definitely you know an older forest and if we do our part in conservation you know we can keep stuff like this here for sure yeah they they could be treating these hemlocks because the adelgids start on the lower branches and work their way up and you know that one we just looked at it was the lower branches and I didn't see the bugs on it I have hemlocks at home eastern hemlocks in my backyard and I just treated them because you know the adelgid kills them slowly and I'm hoping that mine aren't too far gone uh, one of them might be and I already lost one this was before I knew what what killed it so but they kill them slowly from the from the ground up and uh, you know a lot of times you'll see them you know it's very apparent little white puffy things um, and here's another trigger here's another hemlock tree and you know they'd be on the underside of the branches but but I'm not seeing them here and you know what you can do if you have them is uh, you can spray them with horticultural oil if they're small enough you know or there's stuff you can do at the base that will get taken up by the by the roots I used a metacloprid I'm not exactly sure if they're treating here in the forest what they're using you can't just go around putting a metacloprid everywhere in a forest like this because it it kills a lot of other insects that could be valuable to the to the forest ecosystem but this is this is what I'm talking about here friends this is a massive oak tree it's not a red oak I I think this is a white oak friends but it probably doesn't even show up on camera how big this tree really is but it's huge hemlocks here that blew down there's one and then another one right there you can see the root system over there is just massive massive trees these aren't the biggest hemlocks that I've seen but it's a shame to see them go down whoa over there there is a big one uh, it's, I'll have to flip the camera around to show you but let's go look at this root system real fast here maybe you know of course you want to stay on the trails in areas like this because you don't really want to disturb anything that hasn't already been disturbed because if you loosen up the soil you, you make it more prone to stuff like this happening but uh it's crazy that those were taken down now let's uh turn the camera around here how green it is out here. This is that Pennsylvania produced a quarter of the nation's leather and that's why they harvested hemlock so much was because it was for the bark. The hemlock bark is tannin rich and tannin is a key component of producing leather. Some of the trees that are in this tract of land were here when America declared its independence from England. So they were already old by the time of the Civil War. So we would like to thank Todd from Switch It Up for the idea of having an adventure hat. Rachel's mom made an adventure hat for Sarah, who is our map reader here. And uh, Daddy, what, Sarah? We have to go to take a picture. Okay, well, we'll go there and take a picture.
So, as many of you I'm sure know, the eastern hemlock is Pennsylvania's state tree. And to be in a place like this, where there's so many of them, and it's so beautiful, it's really just a blessing. And it's a blessing to have the kids here, uh, because odds are, like I said, if the adelgid keeps spreading, and, and it's not taken care of, that this kind of stuff just ain't gonna be here going forward. Like Rachel was saying, this stuff has been here since the Declaration of Independence was signed. So generation upon generation, they was able to come back here and see this. And, you know, you just hope that in the future that, uh, that that kind of thing would be able to continue. And so that's why we just need to be conservation-minded. Friends, right now we're here at Laurel Hill Outpost, which the campground is just up the way, so we walk down here from our site. They have a statue here dedicated to the CCC, which, if you've seen our Letchworth video, I'm going to be saying much the same stuff. The CCC was an awesome, awesome thing, and I can't believe that in today's society, with the current state of things, that we're not thinking about doing stuff like this. It's just crazy. Back then, you know, they paid these young men about a thousand bucks a month is is what what I read on the sign somewhere. And now we're just handing out thousand dollar bills to everybody for doing nothing, I guess. But these kids work their tails off. I mean, but you can see, and I'll probably give you a more close up of this sign, but you know, they was all about hard work, pride, spirit, education, recreation, sports, camaraderie, heritage. These are all part of the American spirit, and it's what's totally missing from today's world. The, um, the outpost, they've got some good displays about CCC stuff. I'll put them into the video so you can see it. Um, but basically in the 1930s, which, and this, uh, I think I read about this at Letchworth, but it was dissolved essentially because of World War II. But this helped prepare all these kids to go to war and fight. It was just all instrumental in how America became what it is to this day. And, um, you know, these kids really helped with the war effort because it basically, it was a military style thing. So they were ready to go to war before before they had to. And, um, but they did all this good stuff for the country, for the terrain, for the forests, to, for conservation. This Laurel Hill State Park, they do a great job of paying homage to that. And so does over at Mount Davis. If you've seen the first part of this, I think it's going to be a two-part video or two-video series or whatever. Um, you know, I did do some reading, and the CCC is instrumental in all that stuff that's over in that area. So it's just a big, big thing for the region. So I know you guys just seen us pack up and hitch up, but the video's not over. We've got some more entertainment for you here. For one thing, Rachel is going to pilot the truck and trailer over to the dump station. Ah, possibly just to the stop sign just right there. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And then uh, also, we're going to do a hike. Um, so after we dump, we're going to park over by the beach area and uh, we're going to take you on the tram trail, which uh, should leave, lead us up to the Jones Mill. Uh, which is sort of a waterfall feature type thing. Um, it's kind of one of the highlights of Laurel Hill State Park. So stick with us. There's more yet. We just we just got to get out of here without Rachel wrecking my truck. Are you filming this right now? That's on the GoPro, but... So the little mirrors are the most helpful? Well, the, yeah, in this type of situation. The little mirrors kind of are pointed down so you can see the trailer. Yeah. And the road. The, the, Tall mirrors are more for on the highway, like on a four-lane highway, so you can see if you're, if there's somebody else next to the trailer. Okay. But 
like I said, it's tough to get them set up right on the first try. Keep an eye on the mirrors and the front. And very carefully go around this pop up that's parked in the middle of the road. Yeah, you should have plenty of room. So, in case of emergencies, it's a good thing that both people have at least somewhat confidence and ability to hitch things up and go in like a worst case scenario. So we've been doing this for quite some time now, so it's good for good for both of us to be able to drive. So um, friends, as you can see behind me, there is a ton of parking here at Laurel Hill. Uh, they do have some big events and stuff here. If I'd have looked at the map a little bit better and knew my surroundings a little bit better, I could have saved us a couple hundred yards of walking. On the other side of the road here, there's a good bit of parking also. And uh, the trail that we're going to hike is just right over in the corner of that, it looks like. We're trying to get over towards the Shea Trail and the Tram Road Trail, which I'm going to tell you more about here in a second. But it's been a little bit confusing to try to find our way on the map from where we parked to where we're going. But on the map, we're looking for the Jones Scott Singo Cemetery, which there's a pretty good sign here that shows us that it is clearly right over there where Rachel and them are. This looks to be the site of where the CCC had their camp from 1935 to 1942. It says, in recognition of outstanding efforts in conserving the natural resources of Pennsylvania. Like I said, the CCC has been instrumental in this park as well as many others in, in Pennsylvania. And it's, it's actually quite sad in some places, you know, you see the things that they built in ruins. When we were at Blue Knob last year, we were on a trail that was clearly something built by the CCC that has been, you know, totally neglected for who knows how long and, you know, it was almost uh, impassable. It was no longer marked or used because it was the lack of maintenance on it. So it's just a shame. That so friends, this is the Ridge Trail, which is the one we're trying to get on. Still have not found the cemetery we're looking for, but this is all CCC era structures, which now on the map, it looks like this is called Group Camp 8. This is where the CCC had their camp and where they housed all the people that were working in the area. So friends, we're about to get on the Shade Trail, which is this one right here. And the Shade Trail is named after the Shea locomotive. And if you've been a subscriber and you watched our last videos down at Cass Scenic Railroad, we rode on a train pulled by a Shea locomotive. And I'll tell you what, it's an excellent experience. And if you know anything, after watching that video, you'll know that I'll use any excuse to edit train whistles in my videos. <laughs> little store uh, in front of the campground where I took you yesterday they have the CCC statue there and lots of CCC exhibits they also have a model Shea locomotive there which you know basically is an exact model of what we were on a couple weeks ago and it shows you how they worked and how they were instrumental in allowing logging to happen in this region as well as as well as, of course, West Virginia, where we were. And so, what we're on right now is an old railroad grade. There was a nice lady over at the general store yesterday, and she was telling us that if you hike these railroad grades, this trail and the uh, tram, tram road trail, that people constantly find railroad spikes laying around on the trail and beside the trail. And So, we're going to be on the lookout. I can't say for sure if we'll find anything. Uh, and I don't want to get too off the beaten path because it could be snakes or who knows what else. But, um, but the logging industry, as we talked about when we did the uh, Hemlock Trail, is huge in this region. 
which is of course why there's very little virgin timber left but now logging is still a big big thing in Pennsylvania for sure and uh, the state definitely uses it as a revenue source because the state owns you know tons of acreage between state parks and state forests and stuff it's amazing how they was able to get the timber out of here how they cut all these railroad grades how they built all this stuff to get all the wood out of here it's just a crazy feat of engineering and you know it's also evident up north whenever we was up at Kettle Creek State Park and I was fishing with Sarah uh, down by my dad's camp where I was picking them leeks there's a railroad grade down there as well and you know that was Shea locomotives and the timber industry up there so I mean it's just evident everywhere you go in the state Now we're down here by Jones Mill Run and we're on the tram, tram road trail, which is also part of the railroad grade, the logging road. That uh, little bit of the river I just shown you, it looks like probably Trout Unlimited or, or one of those types of organizations are doing some stream restoration projects, which, you know, helps keep the water cool. And I, I would guess that this is native brook trout stream, uh, which would help them survive in it. A brook trout, they need absolutely perfect water conditions to survive, which is why when they logged all this stuff and they straightened out these creeks to use them to transport the timber down downstream, that's what screwed everything up. Friends, we've been back to the Jones Mill site before, where they have the dam and the mill used to be. We did it on the Pump House Trail, so we've never done this tram road trail before. And uh, I'll tell you what, this is really nice. It runs along the stream for most of it, and it's pretty level. I don't think it's an incredibly long trail. I think Rachel said like a little over a mile, which which isn't that bad uh, and it's it's not like a crazy climb or anything like we've been doing which you know we've kind of realized that with William being what it is we've got to stick to some easier stuff although to be honest though when we go to Cowan's Gap here in a few weeks everything that's on my agenda is is tough so you know we'll just have to see how it goes but it's tougher. Everybody says you just put a baby in a backpack and go. Well, not this baby. Sarah's doing her best to get across this rock field. Ryan had to take both dogs because me carrying the baby in the backpack, I would not have made it across here trying to walk a dog too. So he's on up ahead now. Huh. Who's that? Who's that? That's you. That's you. Yeah. Friends, generally speaking, man-made stuff doesn't always excite me as much as nature. But this dam here is pretty cool. The spillway, which I'll show you here in a bit. Check out all that mountain laurel over there. 
it is really really pretty back here and um, it, you know the spillway it's it is cool and this this stuff is clearly old they don't you don't see stuff like this built built today That cool and uh, let me get away from it so maybe you can hear me better so this was built by the CCC one of the first things that they did when they came here to Laurel Hill uh, which looks to be owned by the National Park Service at the time up until 1945 when it became a Pennsylvania State Park so they built this dam to supply water there was a pump house here and it supplied water to the camp where we just were group camp number eight which is was one of the sites there were two sites here where the ccc actually they had camps and it's according to the signs and the map and stuff laurel hill has one of the largest collections of ccc structures still in existence so uh that's crazy so the dam was built to supply water uh that was the purpose of this one and they also built the main dam down at Laurel Hill Lake, which I don't think we're going to get to show you in this video, but it is very clear that this was an area where they had a lot of influence. Oh, I see just the tail of it there. So friends, this is the cemetery that I walked by earlier and didn't really pay it much notice, but uh, it's very interesting. It says on the sign that back when, in the 1800s, uh, the farmers in the area was too poor to have headstones so most of the grave markers um, like you can see is just rocks and uh, there is a couple in this uh, display case here that they were pieced back together that were actual gravestones um, but most of the people buried here they're essentially nameless because there was no nothing no records or anything and they tried to research who's actually buried here with very little to come from it. Allegedly, according to the sign, uh, there's a Revolutionary War soldier that uh, was wounded and was buried here, but um, they're not able to confirm that either. Like the headstones and stuff, and people vandalize in cemeteries, that's just ridiculous. Um, but, but yeah, that's what it is. Uh, you can very easily walk by it and not know it's here. Well friends, we're back home in front of one of my very own hemlock trees that I was referring to earlier in the video. And I just want to thank you guys for watching this video and staying with us. While there won't be a video next week, I do want to tell you that the next few months are going to be packed with some of the best that Pennsylvania has to offer. So stick around, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've got the notifications on. we got a lot of really cool stuff coming in the future here. I don't want to tell you exactly what it all is, but it's, it's going to be good.